Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one, The Accountant, written for use at Work X. The three desperate beings sat at a small table in the break area of the 14th sub-level of the Commonwealth of the Orion Arm of the Milky Way Sentient Species Officers of Financial Reckoning and Documentation. The little was just over a meter tall and almost as broad as he was tall. His moist-looking mustard yellow skin clashed with his cornflower blue sweater vest. Kareen was almost his physical opposite. She was almost two meters tall and covered in a dull red exoskeleton. Two manipulator appendages on each of the upper sections of her thorax grasped each other and rhythmically grasped each other as they did when she was nervous. A blue furry paw poured hot tea into her refreshment container. The paw was attached to Bob. Bob was a small Usarian, but still outmassed the other two put together. Kareen, Cheddar hated Bob. Drink your tea while it is hot and tell us whatever it is that has you so worked up. I'm not worked up, snapped Kareen, her mandibles making a sharp clicking noise as she spoke. Yeah, okay. Tell us what you're not so worked up about, that you just made Bob's back spines go limp, snarked Vool in his wheezing voice. My spines did not go limp, exclaimed Bob. I know, said Vool. You know who got the section leader promotion. Tell me, and it wasn't that snot-headed binary Steve. He is such a suck-up. Kareen looked a long sip of her team from her drinking quill and exhaled. Fine. But you didn't hear this from me. The new boss is a human. A hey, what? Bob nearly yelled. Phil and Kareen both shushed him as the entire break area thrummed to look at the table. That's right. She laid eight more eggs, replied Kareen a bit too loudly. That made all of the co-workers quickly start ignoring their table. No one wanted to see more images of her grandchildren. Kareen lowered her voice to a harsh whisper. Yes, a human... Bob and Phil sat stunned for almost a full minute. Bob spoke first. You know what they say about them, right? They are all crazy death worlders who rip the appendages off the sentience till they get angry. Bob continued. Phil chimed in. Come on, you can't believe all those rumors and stereotypes. Just because they're relatively new to the Commonwealth doesn't mean that they are savages. Green clicked her mandibles rapidly. A nervous habit, she replied. I heard that they cook animals that look a bit like me alive and then break the exoskeleton with their bare hands and suck out their flesh. I think they call them Throaster. Uh, a lobster, corrected Phil. Whatever, replied Kareen. I don't want a boss that thinks I look like lunch. Fine. Let's approach this like we would if we were investigating a suspicious budget report, stated Phil. Let's go around the table and state what we know about the humans, then take the information line item by line item and research each's accuracy. Both Kareen and Bob indicated their agreement. I'll start. I've heard that they are crazy strong and fast for their size. Oh, and that they replace parts of themselves with even stronger cybernetic parts when they are damaged. That was two things. Phil rolls all four eyes. I read that they poison their brains with ETOH, purines and parasympathetic alkaloids for recreation. I heard that they have a stomach acid that can dissolve ferric alloys and that they can expel it when upset. Dude, that's gross. My turn. And since we're talking about gross things, I saw on a documentary that they often expel methane and hydrogen sulfide from their waste sphincter. You're all making that up. You made Kareen's mandibles lock up with that one. I am taking her turn. I heard from my brother-in-law, you know, the plumber, that when they remodeled housing cells for humans, that they would use sprays of hot water to clean themselves. Water hot enough to denature your proteins and at a pressure that would knock down a plain grazer. I get to cook twice. You floor stained and my mandibles did not lock up. I was pausing to gather my thoughts. I heard that they are almost psychic and can communicate complicated information and instructions using subtle, ocular, facial, and body movements. 
Even when they speak, they can make a sentence have a totally different meaning by slight changes in how their mouth parts form the words. When two of them are together, they can have a whole conversation without speaking and can speak such that no one else knows what they communicated. Hey, is there anyone writing all of this down? I thought you would use that eidetic memory that you never shut up about. Are you two done? I'm going again. Based on the computer monitors that we've ordered, their vision spans almost 400 nanometers of the spectrum. As Kareen finished a sentence, a pale smooth hand set a thick walled container down on their table. The smell of scalding roasting organic matter filled their senses. A voice behind Bob spoke. Uh, we also have excellent hearing. End of story. Story number two. The Sound of Music, written by Lost Fall. Hey, Chakra. I had a great idea for a cultural exchange, announced Jason, the human ambassador. Oh, what's that? Chakra asked, thankful for an exoskeleton that didn't allow him to cringe. The humans were always eager to share their culture. They also had an unquenchable thirst for knowledge, one that bordered on insanity. Part of his job was to stay on the human's good side while protecting his race. While Earth was far from what his race would consider an inhabitable world, he couldn't help but find the humans that lived there fascinating. The longer he spent with them, the more of their duality he saw. They could be kind and ruthless. And it wasn't a difference between individuals. The extreme duality appeared to exist in all humans in many aspects from what he saw. The fact that they'd put forth the effort to find as comfortable of a city for him to live in. That said a lot about his host's capability to be compassionate. Baton Rouge was a warm and damp climate, much like his homeworld. Their insistence on trying to do cultural exchanges, so far proved dangerous to other species, showed how oblivious they could be. He couldn't help but appreciate their zeal, though. Jason had a huge smile on his face. So, uh, you know how our races can generally hear sounds over the same wavelengths. What about doing a cultural exchange of music? Chakra found it easy to like Jason, and with his happy, friendly manner. My race does not use heavy beats or spoken words in their music. We communicate with our mates via our songs, Chakra started. He had already learned the hard way that human music was potent on his species. Upon arrival, he had discovered a radio station playing classic pop. The heavy rhythmic beat had a hypnotic effect. He had found that he could not move until the next commercial break. That, and he had an undeniable urge to get jiggy with it, even though he had no idea what that meant. Jason didn't seem phased by his response. Well, um... It's not a big deal. We have lots of different instrumental music. After a moment of consideration, he decided, Okay, Jason, but before we send anything, I would like to review and ensure that I fully understand. He knew that he was taking a personal risk to protect his people. His caution was because he had been amongst the humans too long. Great! Jason seemed even happier. Let me pull up some videos on our internet. Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, here's a good one. Here's a good one. Uh, ever hear of a, a glass harmonica? As Jason said this, a video was loaded on his tablet screen. It was showing a man sitting behind a device that he would never have thought was an instrument. This device seemed to have many different sized glass balls. They were mounted horizontally on a spindle. The man was dipping his fingers into a bowl of water. Ben Franklin invented that one. It's got 37 bowls. You should see the dance of the sugar plum fairies on it, Jason beamed. Very soon, Chakra was shocked to hear the most haunting music. It was almost like the world of his species, but off enough that he couldn't understand it. It was like it was telling a haunting and intriguing story. He found he wanted to know what it said. Chakra stood amazed as he watched more videos, each showing different instruments from orchestras, brass bands, calypso, bluegrass. Each was like a distorted voice of his people, telling a story that he couldn't quite understand. Some were emotional, fun, 
amusing, but none as haunting as the first instrument. The range and types of musical instruments he saw the humans play was shocking. Some resembled instruments of his own people, but others were extremely exotic. Having an exoskeleton meant that they had nothing like brass bands. His race also lacked human dexterity, so string instruments were very different. As the last video ended, Chakra found himself staring at the screen. Jason, that was the most amazing thing that I've ever seen. I'm starting to think that this might buy will work. Uh, it would show humanity in a different light. Uh, they would see the beauty that you can create. How many musical groups do you think we could put together to tour my world and play each of these? I really would love to see the glass harmonica played in person. Even as he was finishing saying it, he could see Jason's smile fade a bit. Um... In, in person, huh? Uh, that, that, that might be a bit hard. Jason was wringing his hands as he said it. Chakra knew that was generally not a good sign. Last time he had seen Jason act this way was when he asked about the human celebrity decorative lights. He was fascinated by their, um, fireworks, until he learned that they were full of explosives. He had assumed that they were harmless projections than when he first seen them. He still cringes when he imagined where the parts fell as they saw them over a major population center. What does that mean? Chakra could even hear the wariness in his own voice. Well, um, not many people play the glass harmonica anymore. There was some side effect. Only a few are still willing to play it. Uh, Jason began to explain. We can get everything else, though. What do you mean by side effects? Chakra was already starting to worry. Humans were resilient. Anything that hurt them was something to worry about, to say the least. They think it was probably caused by how they made the bowls, though others attributed it to the extended exposure to the sounds of the instruments. Dacian started to explain. He was trying to explain this to not cause concern, which ironically seemed to make it worse. Jason, friend, just tell me. Chakra tried to reassure him. Part of him could still hear the haunting music in his mind. Well, the musicians that played those started going insane, so uh, the instrument fell out of favor, and a few will play it or listen to much of it anymore, Jason finally said. Chakra stared in shock. He found himself letting loose a human expression. Damn it! Why do you humans have to weaponize everything? End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click, click, click. With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 patrons and channel members. Alithia, Barky, Feudic Yol, Cam Maxwell, Casper Onholtz, White Band 420, Lord Asrakal, Arcalian, and Oakfield.